Will the stock market continue to crash throughout the rest of 2024? Well, Tom Lee has a warning to all investors that you need to pay attention to because the next eight weeks could be terrible for the stock market. But after that, we could be setting up for the greatest dip buying opportunity in years. You have the opportunity to make a ton of money over the next few years, but you have to play your cards right over the next few weeks. I'm going to show you what Tom Lee said, then I'm going to explain it, and then at the end of the video, I'm gonna show you how to position yourself to make a ton of money over the next few years. September's not great, and we know, I mean, we always make lows in October, or we have many, many times, which means usually a lot of times September was not great. I think investors should be cautious for the next eight weeks, you know, September. Next eight weeks, be cautious. That's, that, yes. You're not always cautious. That's right. When the market's been up seven of the eight months this year, so it, we know it's an incredibly strong market, but we also have the September cuts and we have the election, things that'll get people nervous. I, I think in the next eight weeks, people get a, a chance to buy. So I think it's good to be cautious, but just ready to buy that dip. That warning actually came out a week ago, and it turns out that Tom Lee was absolutely correct. Now, his warning came out a week ago, which means we got about seven weeks left in that warning. Let's talk about what had Tom Lee so spooked and what caused the market sell-off last week. Then we'll talk about some things that could cause the market to sell off over the next seven weeks before I share why this could be one of the greatest dip buying opportunities in years. For those of you who are new to this channel, my name is Stock Curry. I'm a former Merrill Lynch and Morgan Stanley investment banker, and I have over 25 years of trading experience. The troubles last week all started on Tuesday and they continued throughout the rest of the week. On Tuesday, the ISM manufacturing PMI edged higher to 47.2 in August, but it was expected to come in at 47.5. The weak manufacturing measure raised concern of a U.S. economic slowdown. And while a further downward lurch in the PMI points to the manufacturing sector acting as an increased drag on the economy midway through the third quarter, forward-looking indicators suggest this drag could intensify in the coming months. The stock market is less concerned about what happened in the past, and it's far more concerned about what might happen in the future. That is why the manufacturing index that came out on Tuesday caused such a major sell-off in stocks. It was because the forward-looking data showed that not only is the economy slowing down, but it's about to slow down a lot faster, leading us into a possible recession. The stock market did not like that, and that's why it sold off so much on Tuesday. But it wasn't just Tuesday's sell-off. The stock market also had other bad news last week that caused stocks to fall even further. On Thursday, the ADP private payroll numbers came out and it showed that the increase in private jobs was only 99,000. That is the smallest gain since 2021 and far below estimates. This is the second month in a row we've had weak jobs numbers and it's pointing to a significant slowdown in the economy. This is the main reason why the Federal Reserve is expected to cut interest rates at their September FOMC meeting in two weeks is because they are very concerned that the labor market is slowing down and might be leading to a recession. But it was ultimately the Friday jobs numbers that everybody was paying attention to and those did not come in much better. August payrolls grew by less than expected at 142,000. The only good news is that the unemployment rate tricked down slightly to 4.2%. The unemployment rate can vary from month to month, especially as people who have been unemployed for a long time fall off of the official numbers. So seeing a slight downward in unemployment from 4.3% to 4.2% is not really that telling. And it ultimately left a little bit of uncertainty about what the Federal Reserve is going to do in two weeks. We're going to talk about more of that later. But again, I want to focus on the forward guidance. 
because while the unemployment rate is currently at 4.2%, one of the best indicators of where the unemployment rate is going to go in the future is by looking at tech jobs. The reason for that is one of the largest sectors in the economy right now and one of the largest sectors in the stock market is technology. So if technology is having a lot of layoffs and a lot of unemployment, that means the overall economy could be heading in that direction also. So where is the tech unemployment right now? Unfortunately, IT unemployment hit 6% amid the overall U.S. job growth slowing down. Most concerning is that joblessness for IT workers is at its worst since the dot-com bubble burst in the early 2000s. That's right, IT unemployment is higher than it was in 2008. Now, this isn't the only comparison that I'm going to make to 2008. I've got another comparison coming up later. For now, let's talk about how all of this is affecting the stock market. Risk on momentum in stocks has succumbed to mounting growth worries. Frothy valuations have created new vulnerabilities. Many had to chase the rally and bought at expensive levels, meaning they may sell quickly if things start to reverse, and the market could fall harder and deeper before the usual dip buying kicks in. To explain what's happening here, let me show you a chart of NVIDIA because everybody's been buying NVIDIA and I think it's the easiest way to explain what's happening with the overall stock market. As you can see on this weekly chart, NVIDIA is down massively over the past two weeks. It closed Friday at $102.83. But as you can see on the zoomed out chart, NVIDIA is still up over 500% over the past two years. And with the stock up over 500% over the past two years, you would think that the vast majority of investors have made a ton of money on NVIDIA. But as it turns out, that's not the case. Let me show you some shocking data. The average cost of NVIDIA stock for investors is $111. That's right. As you can see here on the chart, everything in red is where investors bought. Everything in green is where investors bought. The red is where investors bought and they're now losing money. The green is where investors bought and they are making money. As you can see, the vast majority of investors are losing money because the vast majority of investors bought at a price higher than where NVIDIA is currently trading. And the average investor bought NVIDIA at $111. And with the stock currently trading at $102.83, the average investor is down 7.36% on their investment. Well, wait a second. If NVIDIA is up 500% over the past two years, how is it possible that the average person bought NVIDIA at $111? How is it possible that the average investor is down 7.36% on their NVIDIA investment? It all has to do with trading psychology and human psychology. The stocks might change, the stock market might change, the times might change, but one thing that never changes in the stock market is human psychology. Traders always buy at the top. They always have, they always will. Buying at the top is not the only mistake that I see a lot of investors make. There are other mistakes that investors make as well that cause them to lose money, even on stocks that have massive rallies like Nvidia. On Saturday, September 14th at 3 p.m. Eastern Time, I am going to be holding a first time ever live masterclass. I'm going to show you what I learned at Merrill Lynch and Morgan Stanley and how investment bankers trade that is so different from how retail traders trade. I'm going to show you why investment bankers make money when retail traders often lose money. So if you're struggling to make money in the stock market, you're struggling to see profits and you want to learn what you're doing wrong, join me on September 14th 
15th at 3 p.m. Eastern for a live masterclass where I'm going to be showing you the Wall Street way. This is completely and totally free. I don't know if I'm ever going to do another one of these ever again. So if you can make it, the link to register is in the description below. Just click the first link in the description to register for that live masterclass Saturday, September 14th at 3 p.m. Eastern. And just like with NVIDIA, the vast majority of traders bought NVIDIA at the top. The vast majority of traders are losing money on NVIDIA. And unfortunately, if NVIDIA continues to fall, those traders are going to panic. They're going to sell. And as they panic and sell, that is going to cause NVIDIA to fall further. As NVIDIA falls further, it's going to cause more panic selling, known as capitulation, and NVIDIA is going to fall much lower than its fair valuation. And when that happens, it is going to set up one of the greatest dip buying opportunities in years. Of course, we're not just talking about NVIDIA. We're talking about all of the mega cap tech stocks, all of the stocks that were bought up to extremely high valuations that are now falling that most investors are now losing money on as they get fearful, as they panic, as they sell out, as that stock goes into free fall, it is going to open up a major dip buying opportunity. And people who are patient, who are willing to wait about seven more weeks for the market to bottom out, those are the people that are going to be able to buy at the lows. Those are the people that are going to make a ton of money. Just like in 2022, how Warren Buffett waited till October of 2022 to buy Apple stock. He literally waited for the market to bottom out and then sold at the top of the market in 2024. Just like Warren Buffett was extremely patient in waiting for the bottom on Apple and then selling at the top. Just like Warren Buffett made more money on Apple stock than he's made in any other stock in his lifetime. You too, if you are patient, can buy stocks at a very low valuations in about two months and then hold them for a few years and make a ton of money. But it's all going to be a game of patience. Now, there are some things that could cause the stock market to fall further. There are some things that could cause the stock market to rebound a little sooner. We've got to pay attention to these. So let's talk about those things now. One of the biggest fears for investors that could cause the stock market to crash throughout all of 2024 and even into 2025 is the fact that the yield curve briefly turned normal. So let's talk about what this means for the stock market. The yield curve is when short-term interest rates compared to long-term interest rates are compared. And whenever those short-term interest rates are higher than long-term interest rates. This is called an inversion because it's not normal. And whenever the short-term interest rates disinvert and become lower than the long-term interest rates, that is almost always when a recession starts. So with the yield curve now disinverting, why should you care? Because the U.S. Treasury yield curve has a long history of raising alarms among investors and economists. That's mostly because when it is flipped upside down or inverts from its usual upward slope, traders start getting anxious about the health of the economy. That happened two years ago in 2022. Now, almost every recession since 1955 has been preceded by an inverted curve. The only exception has been recently when it inverted in 2022. We have not had a recession yet. Every single time since 1955, when the yield curve has inverted, it has always 100% of the time led to a recession. The only time it has not led to recession was in 2022, but it didn't actually disinvert until just now, last week. When the yield curve inverts, rates for short-term bonds exceed those of bonds with longer maturities, and a U.S. recession has always followed. The spread between the three-month bills and 10-year notes has inverted between every single one of the past seven 
U.S. recessions going all the way back to 1955. But what is the disinversion telling us? Well, a restoration of the normal upward slope of the yield curve or disinversion typically happens when the Fed starts to lower interest rates or the market starts pricing in looming rate cuts, just like it is now with the September rate cuts. Since the central bank tends to ease policy when the economy hits a snag, some say such disinversions instead of the actual inversion itself that we got in 2022, the disinversion often signals that a recession is imminent. On this chart of the yield curve compared to recessions, I have circled when the yield curve disinverted, just like it did last week. And as you can see, it was actually the disinversion that was very, very close to the start of a recession in each of the past seven recessions. Sometimes the disinversion occurred after the recession had already started, but over the past four, now possibly five disinversions, it occurred a few months prior to the recession actually starting. Why does this happen? It happens because the Federal Reserve has a long history of doing rate cuts too late. And it is actually the Federal Reserve that causes these recessions. They keep interest rates too high for too long. This causes a major economic slowdown and leads us straight into a recession. That is why every single time the Federal Reserve starts to cut interest rates, they cut too late and it causes a recession. The stock market is now stumbling on nagging fears that the Fed may have made another mistake. In addition to a continued contraction in manufacturing activity, motor vehicle sales fell to the second lowest level in the past 18 months, while construction spending saw its first monthly fall in over 20 months. In other words, the economy is just as bad as it was two years ago, and we all remember what happened to the stock market two years ago in 2022. Another 20% or more fall in the stock market could be coming soon, and in fact, it may have already started. But again, don't panic, don't fear, because... We also remember what happened in October of 2022 when the stock market bottomed out and then went on a massive two-year rally. If you had been patient and waited to buy the dip in October of 2022, you would have made a ton of money. And it's possible that if you are patient and wait to buy the dip at the end of October of 2024, you could once again make a ton of money. But we can't just jump in without keeping our eyes on the data because things could change. Right now, investors have a renewed focus on inflation data as the Fed weighs the size of the expected September rate cuts. On Wednesday, the CPI or Consumer Price Index inflation data for August is coming out. And that CPI inflation data is expected to give us a little bit more insight as to how big of a rate cut the Federal Reserve is expected to do. CME futures traders are currently pricing in a 71% chance of a single 25 basis point rate cut with a 29% chance of a larger 50 basis point rate cut. If CPI inflation data comes in at 2.6% like it's expected to, that could lend more credibility to that 50 basis point rate cut. The more inflation slows down, the more the Federal Reserve can focus on the slowing economy. And if their focus is more on the slowing economy, then the Federal Reserve can do a larger rate cut. Now, you might think that a larger rate cut would be good for stocks and could cause a rally in stocks. But while that may have been the case over the past year, it's no longer the case. A half point rate cut is actually a bad omen for markets. 
because at that point, people are going to start to price in more of a recession than if the Fed can steadily clip at 25 basis points for a few meetings. If the Federal Reserve is going to come out and do 25 basis point rate cuts for the next few meetings, then the stock market might react that the Federal Reserve is not that concerned about the economy and the stock market might be able to go up. But if the Federal Reserve comes out and does an unexpected 50 basis point rate cut, that could signal that the Federal Reserve is very concerned about an upcoming recession and it could spook the markets into a sell-off since a recession is bad for stocks. And while the stock market is already sinking, we have to talk about why the next two months could really hurt. They say bad news comes in threes, and that appeared to be at work this week with worries about the economy, semiconductors, and the coming presidential election looming over the market. On top of all of this, the nation now has just two months until the presidential election, one that is expected to be extremely close. The market dislikes uncertainty in general, so it's likely the race will continue to be a drag on stocks throughout the historically turbulent months of September and October, which tend to be even worse for investors during election years. Of course, the rally in stocks tends to start in the first week of November during election years once a winner is clear, and the rallies over the next two years tend to be fairly significant, which is why if we do get a stock market sell-off over the next two months, buying in the first week of November could be your best bet. But I do have to warn you that the stock market is still tracking just like it did in 2007 and 2008. If the stock market continues to track like it did in 2007 and 2008, we could be looking at a pretty nice rally this week, followed by a prolonged sell-off for the next six weeks. Possibly the sell-off triggered by the Federal Reserve, and then continuing over fears of a government shutdown, and then continuing further into October over fears around the election before we get that November first week rally that continues for about two months. After that rally in November and December, however, we're going to have to take another close look at the markets because that is where we could be seeing a top in the markets and potentially a major sell-off in 2025 if we do in fact get this major recession. So no matter what, it looks like being patient for the next seven weeks is prudent. It looks like buying the dip on the first week of November is going to be our best bet. It looks like holding for about two months throughout November, December through the Santa Claus rally is by far going to be the best thing to do. But starting January 1st, we're going to have to take another look at the economy and the markets because we could be facing another sell off like we got in 2022. Let me know in the comments below what you think about all this. Let me know if you think I'm right, if I'm wrong. Let me know if there's any other data you think I should be looking at. And let me know how you plan on playing it.